Quick story time. So it's Christmas, one of my favorite Christmases, this last Christmas, and I spent a lot of time capturing it on film because I wanted to remember it. And I was super excited to get my film scans back, and when I did, they looked like this. Hmm, something clearly went terribly wrong here. If this has ever happened to you, you know that it's not a good feeling. The idea that the moments that you put all this time, care, and effort into capturing are probably gone forever. You can see that some of these images are kind of salvageable, and by salvageable I mean that you can kind of tell what's happening here, but some of them are just completely lost. Like, what is that? What was that? That was once a photo that I took. Now unfortunately this just kind of comes with the territory of shooting film, but the truth that we cheat ourselves out of when this happens is saying that it's not our fault, and that it was all the camera, and there's nothing that we really could have done. And I disagree with that. So today I want to walk you through exactly what happened here and hopefully articulate it in a way where we can both avoid ever losing photos like this ever again. All right, so the first thing we need to do is identify the culprit, the camera that this happened in. So let's go back to the roll. And I can see in one of these photos that I can actually make out what's happening that I took this to a specific concert in October. So this roll went from October to December. What camera would I have taken to this concert and shot on Christmas with my family? It must have been my Contax T2. So as the story goes, and I remember this moment specifically, I was seated on the couch mid conversation with my stepsister when I had just shot the last roll, the last photo of my roll. Now the contacts being an automatic film winding camera, what it did was it realized that it had reached the end of the roll and it went to wind the film back into the cassette. And then I went to open the back of the camera, swap out the rolls. And I saw the one thing that a film photographer never wants to see their film on one side of the camera, the cassette on the other, neither connected, and the film completely exposed to the light that you have just given it by opening the back of the camera. So I immediately close it. Okay, damage control, what do I do? I ask my aunt for a light proof bag, something that I can store the film in without getting any light on it, where it can stay safely until I can somehow get it to a lab. I go to the bathroom, cover all little entry sources of light, and just kind of open the back of the camera, pull the film out, put it in the bag, okay. So hypothetically, we're safe now, right? But if we went back to the moment of truth, there would have been two telltale signs that this was going to happen. How do I know this? Because it's happened to me before. I can recall at least one other instance where this has happened to me. One was definitely sometime in 2020 when a role I had shot in my Olympus Mew, same thing, got ripped from the cassette I opened the back and I exposed it to light. I ended up handing that entire camera over to a local lab and they were able to take the film out and develop it with minimal damage to the film. Well, you can see the results are much more usable than what happened this occasion, but still very compromised. Now the telltale signs. So to understand why these are signs, we need to understand what happens when an automatic winding camera rewinds your film back into the cassette. So when you're shooting, the film slowly gets pulled out of the cassette, advancing to each different frame, right? Now, when you reach the end of the roll, the camera goes to pull to the next frame, but it can't pull to the next frame because there is no more film. So it gives the film a little tug and it senses that there's resistance there. And that resistance cues the camera in to say, okay, we've reached the end of the roll, time to rewind it back into the cassette. Now, the first sign is that when my contacts gave the film its customary and usual tug, there was a slightly different sound than usual, a ripping sound. It was very soft. And I actually think I did register this subconsciously, but I clearly paid it no mind. The second telltale sign was that when the film, the film was rewinding back into the canister, the frame count indicator that says, you know, you're on frame 24, 25, 36, those numbers were dropping at a record pace. It normally has a pretty steady cadence to it, 35, 34, 33, but it was just and that I actually did register consciously, but clearly I was distracted and I didn't pick up on that. And if I did, I could have potentially saved this role and those memories and I probably wouldn't have made this video. But there's something else that's awry here. And this is not something that I think everybody needs to necessarily be aware of, especially if we can avoid this in the future. But if we look at the earlier roles where something similar happened. These memories are still intact. There's still color there. 
but this Christmas roll got absolutely nuked somehow. So what I think happened here is that the lightproof bag that I had the film stored in was not actually a lightproof bag. And I went to leave from my aunt's place around Christmas and come back over to Bend. And I had the lightproof bag in my passenger seat. And I think that it must have been exposed to some direct sunlight at some point. And the reason I think that is because on this image, you can see there's a shadow of a loose film strip. How else would that have happened somewhere in this process? So that's uh, clearly very avoidable. But then again, so is this whole thing. So how do we avoid this? Well, we know that this is likely only going to be an issue on automatic winding film cameras, like point and shoots and late model SLRs. And we know that it occurs when the camera goes to advance the film, but there is no more film. So it gives it the tug and that physically separates the cassette from the film. Now, this is obviously not going to be a problem on all film, but it appears that some film is not adhered to the cassette as well as other roles. That is just the way that it is, unfortunately. But there is an easy solution here. Once you've reached the end of your roll, don't try and squeeze out that last half frame, you know, your 37th, 37th and a half, 38th exposure. Just when you know that your camera is right before that threshold of automatic rewind, just hit the manual rewind button. I would argue that sacrificing that last potentially mediocre half frame in favor of ensuring the safety of all the photos that you cared about that came before it is a meaningful, worthwhile price to pay. And then listen for a proper rewind. You should be able to hear the tension on the film as it's being pulled back into the cassette and then at the end, hear the release of that tension. And then while it's rewinding, pay attention to the frame count indicator. It should be going down at a normal pace. If it's going down super fast, then you probably know something is awry. And then just as an extra precaution, when you go to open the back of the camera, just take a peek, right? Make sure that everything is all good. If you've done all the previously mentioned tips, then you're probably gonna be fine. But that extra half second means a whole lot when we're talking about exposing naked film to light because losing rolls sucks. Losing memories that you thought that you'd captured sucks. But hopefully through these previous mistakes, we can learn to do better and protect those memories and photographs in the future. I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.